Here is another in NBC's great parade of new shows. As Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there, this is Diamond. You know, there are a lot of people in a big city like this. Good ones and bad ones. They walk down Broadway and rub elbows and you can't tell them apart. Why can't you? Because a lot of them were poured out of the same mold. Brought up in the middle of garbage cans and gang wars. Weaned on the smell of slums and conditioned to the taste of dirt and the kick in the ribs. By the time they get old enough to raise their fist, they're given two choices. Two ways to beat the gang wars and garbage cans. One guy picks himself up, shakes off the filth, and jumps over on the right side of the fence. The other guy picks himself up, too. But when he does, he raises that fist and shakes it at the whole world because he wants things the easy way. He continues to shake his fist until someone shoves a gun in it. Then he's a swaggering giant. Sometimes he climbs over with his little bag of rot and hides in the lap of society. But take away the gun and he ends up right back in the middle of the garbage cans with his face in the dirt. What about the guy on the right side of the fence? Well, you rarely ever hear of him, unless he becomes president or gets mixed up with the guy on the wrong side of the fence. Like the case I bumped into a couple of days ago. It all started in Central Park. Some crook I run over, that young guy over there ran over with his car. I came up right after it happened. He was leaning over her and crying. A little late for crying, I'd say. Says he didn't kill her. Says someone pushed her in front of his car. <laughs> Ain't that a good one? All right, everybody back. Here comes the ambulance. Come on, you. But I tell you, I didn't kill her. I was in love with her. That's the last thing you should have said. But I swear I didn't do it. I was going to meet her about a, about a half a block up the street, and someone pushed her out in front of my car. I couldn't stop in time. Hey, look, I just got to write the report and take you down to the station. You can tell it to the inspector. Now look out. Here's the ambulance. Hello, Crackett. Yeah, you're too late. The body's ready for the morgue. Ah, Central Park's turning into a graveyard. I'm going to start taking my girl someplace else. What do you mean? Somebody else got to run over in the park? Somebody got shot full of holes. Call came in just for this one. That uh, gangster Chino Scarbo? Scarbo got knocked off. He was dough, wasn't he? Please, officer, can't I get to a phone? Shut up. One of the biggest gangsters in town gets rubbed out, and I gotta show up at the station with you. You know, Sonny, I'm not pleased with you at all. Diamond Detective Agency, corpse is designed with you in mind. Rick. Oh, hello, Helen, baby. Where do you get all those awful slogans? Ghost Rider. Ho, ho, ho. Get it? Rick. Wasn't a riot? No, Rick. Was a bomb. Oh. Okay, maybe this will get a yuck. Oh. Oh, here's a butte. Are you lonely? Join the Lonely Souls Club and find your perfect soulmate. All ages. Guarantee satisfaction and money refunded. Well, I wonder if Mighty Joe Young knows about this. Rick. What are you talking about? I'm reading the personals. Hey, get a load of this one. We'll give ride to coast, must be young companion, pretty, easy on the eyes. Hmm. Think I ought to apply, baby? You're ridiculous. Oh, here's an odd one. Anyone witnessing unusual accident at the 77, 72nd Street transverse, 11 p.m. Wednesday night, when young girl was killed, called Skylar 6036. Urgent. That's in Central Park. Yeah, somebody's got troubles. Mr. Diamond? Uh, hold it a minute, baby. Yeah, I'm Diamond. What can I do for you? I, uh, want to hire you. Uh, Helen. Yes, I know. Bye. A hundred dollars a day in expenses, sir. That's your fee? Yep. I like to give it to the prospective client first. If he turns green and faints, we both save a lot of time and talk. How do you feel? About the fee? Fine. Well, what else is bothering you? My son is being held on a manslaughter charge. Well, if you kill somebody, that's a job for the police. But he didn't do it intentionally. The girl was shoved in front of his car. That's his story. Yes, it is. And I believe him. Hmm? Who was the girl, and why do you think anyone would want to kill her? Her name was Jean Cooper. My son was in love with her. 
Why anyone would want to kill her, I really can't say. Uh Uh-huh. Your name and your son's name, where he's being held? My name is Cook, Earl Cook. My son's name is Tom. He's at the 5th Precinct Police Station. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I beg your pardon? Uh, Forget it. Uh, What's your business, Mr. Cook? Politics. Where can I reach you? I live at 261 Riverside Drive. My phone is Skyler 6036. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I don't know. That phone number's familiar. Where did your son run over this girl, Mr. Cook? The 72nd Street Transverse. 11 o'clock Wednesday night? Oh, yes. How did you know? I read the papers. Is this your ad in the personal column? Yes, yes it is. You see, the police claim there were no witnesses. But I had hopes that there might have been someone who had seen the accident. Well, if if anyone called you, let me know. Now, uh, I'll take $100, Mr. Cook. That's a retainer in case I run into trouble and have to get buried in a hurry. I hate to strain my relatives. He wrote me out a check, and I closed the office and headed for the 5th Precinct Police Station. An automobile death isn't exactly up my alley, but if someone had pushed the girl out in front of the car, then it was murder. And that was a territory I knew my way around in. Well, well, good morning, Sergeant Otis. Uh, oh, where did you come from, Shamus? Sugar and spice and everything nice. Huh? That's what little boys are made of. You're crazy. That's what little girls are made of. Why, Sergeant, you peaked. Uh, you want to see the lieutenant? I think that would be lovely. Go on, then. Oh, uh, Otis. Uh-huh. I just had a horrible thought. Yeah? Wouldn't it be awful if there was a whole room full of you? Hello, all. Diamond, you get out of here. Every time you wander into this office, I grow another ulcer. Why, Walt, I'm surprised at you. Well, you wouldn't be if you had to listen to Otis bellyaching all over the precinct 12 hours a day. Why don't you leave that poor guy alone? Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him? How can I help it? He screams so loud, only dogs can get with it. Have you got a boy booked here on the manslaughter charge, uh, Tom Cook? Yes, we have. I knew darn good and well you'd be springing something before you'd sit down and act like a normal human being. What do you want Cook for? He ran over a dame last night, and that's that. Maybe you want to give him a driving lesson? Uh, uh, uh. You're turning blue again, Walt. I'll light up like a pinball machine if you don't start giving me some peace and quiet. Can I see, Cook? No, you can't. Why not? I know you. You'll end up by proving you wasn't even in the city last night. Before the day is gone, we'll be booking Otis for the killing. Did he do it? Who? Otis. Now, you stop that. Don't you dare start that routine again. I'm the biggest sucker in the world for that thing, and I admit it, but I am prepared. I know who's on first base today. Who? Williams. He's playing for... Uh, Otis! Yeah, Lieutenant? Yeah, Lieutenant. Yeah, Lieutenant. Is that all you can say? Take Diamond down to see that guy Cook. And if you let him back in this office, I'll break every bone in your fat head. Yeah, Lieutenant. Oh. Where is that bicarbonate? My Walt. I left Walt coming on like Vesuvius, and Otis took me down in the tombs to see Tom Cook. Cook was a man about 25 or 26, put together like a high jumper. He had sandy hair and a nice face. Also, he looked pretty worried. I tell you, Mr. Diamond, I didn't intentionally run over Jean. She called and asked me to meet her in the park. Why? Well, we always met there. Oh. You say she was pushed in front of the car? Well, that's what it looked like. There were some bushes right near the sidewalk. She came flying out of them and fell in front of me before I could put on the brakes. What did she want to see you about? It was personal. Now, look, look. You're up on a manslaughter charge. You can get a lot of time for that. Now, what did you want to see you about? I can't tell you. I, I just can't tell you. It would ruin someone. It's going to wreck you if you don't. Then it'll have to. Okay, okay. Did she have any enemies at all? Boyfriends, girlfriends, ex-husbands, jealous ice men? She had an ex-husband. When did she separate from him? About a year ago. Why? Do you think maybe Cooper was jealous? Is his name Cooper? Yes, uh, John Cooper. Oh, live in town? Well, he was living at 498 West 81st Street, but that was a year ago. Okay. Tell me where your girl was living. 383 Madison Avenue, apartment 206. She was living under her married name, Cooper. Mm. Sure you don't want to tell me what she wanted to see you about? I can't, Mr. Diamond. Okay, but I hope the person you're protecting appreciates it. Five years in Sing Sing is stretching loyalty a long way. This person's worth it. Uh, Otis, let me out of here. You locked me up with a Boy Scout. Uh, Mr. Cook? Yes? Uh, Who is this? This is Diamond. Diamond, I'm so glad you phoned. Oh? Remember my ad in the personal columns? Yes. 
Well, I just received a call from someone who claims he saw a man push a girl in front of my son's car. Oh. He said he was in a hurry, so he didn't wait around to see the rest. Can you imagine that? In too much of a hurry to stay round. No, I can't imagine it, unless he was running away from something, didn't want to be caught. Did he uh, tell you anything else? No, I, I asked his name, but he hung up. No. Oh. Well, if you hear from him again, call Lieutenant Levinson of the 5th Precinct. And I'll call you later. All right, Mr. Diamond. But now I'm sure my son is innocent. Well, I hope I can come up with more than your confidence. I knew a guy who yelled frame all the way to the electric chair. They fried him like a lean pork chop. I left the phone booth and took off for John Cooper's apartment. I found the place and gave my rabbit's foot a pat on the hock. The little bunny was still with me because a John Cooper was listed on the mailboxes. I took the steps two at a time. Yeah, who is it? Uh, the name's Diamond. I don't want any. I'm selling a homicide, complete with samples. You better open up. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm talking about your ex-wife. She was killed last night. Why? Mind if I come in? No, 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 come on in. Jean dead. How did it happen? She was run over by a car. Oh, that's awful. Are you from the police? You got a gold star. Where were you at 11 o'clock Wednesday night? Well, it's right here in my apartment. You can prove it? Well, if I didn't leave, I don't guess I can prove it. I hope you don't think I ran over, Gene. I know who ran over. I'm trying to find out who aimed her. I don't understand. She was pushed in front of the car. How do you know that? Why shouldn't I know that? Well, what... I don't know. I, I, I guess you should. When was the last time you saw your ex-wife? Oh, about eight months ago. We didn't get along, so we didn't speak after we split up. You haven't seen her since? No. Or are you jealous of her new boyfriend? Jealous? Why should I be? Good question. I'll see you later, Mr. Cooper. Yeah. I hope I've been at some help. You've been dandy. I left Cooper pinning up his gold star and headed for the dead girl's apartment. I knew the law had already been there and that it would probably be locked tighter than a wine truck on Skid Row. I found the landlady's door and gave it a jolt. Yeah? Oh, what do you want? I'm uh, looking for the landlady. You want an apartment? We got one coming up in a couple of days. The dame that was in it croaked. You can pay in advance if you want it. Can I take a look at it? No. Lousy coppers told me not to let anyone in. You got my word, it's a good one. Oh, well then, you'd better let me talk to your mother. My mother? My old lady's been dead for 20 years. She has? Aren't you a little young to be running an apartment all by yourself? Hey, Sonny. Yeah? How old do you think I am? Well, it's hard to tell. I'd say, oh, about 28. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the apartment. But watch those steps. I think you could use some glasses. Right up here, handsome. Was the poor girl who died married? Used to be, but she got divorced. Here it is. There you are, honey. Go on in and take a look around. I'll go on back downstairs in case the law comes back. I'll have to stall him, I guess. Thanks, beautiful. Oh, that's all right, honey. When you're done, stop in at my place and I'll give you a drink of gin. I waited until I heard the old bat fly down the stairs, and then I took the place apart. It took me exactly ten minutes, and even if I do say so, it was a pretty neat job. I was on the last lap, going through the wastebaskets, when I spotted something on the magazine stand. It was just below eye level. It was a late issue of a magazine, and it was addressed to Mr. John Cooper, 498 West 81st Street. I grabbed it and picked up the phone. Homicide, Sergeant Otis. Oh, this is Wooly. Was you talking to Lieutenant Levinson? Oh, how are you, Wooly? Uh, get it for your chop chop. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Oh, very fine. Chop chop. Your head, maybe. Huh? Wooly say very fine. You speak very fine Chinese. Oh. Lieutenant Levinson. Oh, this is... Uh, uh, this is Diamond Walt. It is. I told Otis I didn't want to talk to you. He said Wu Lee was on the pipe. Oh, this is Wu Lee too, Walt. Oh, that lame brain, Otis. Oh, what is it now, Diamond? I got a liar in the balcony, Walt. What are you talking about? I've spoken to three people about the girl that was run over. One of them lied to me. Now, I believe the kid's story. I think she was pushed. So, she was pushed. I can't be bothered with that right now. I'm all tangled up in the Scarborough killing. We found the gun that did the job lying in the bushes in Central Park. Wait a minute. In Central Park? Yeah, we traced it to a pawn shop, and the pawnbroker identified one Louis Spiegel as the one that bought the gun. Walt, what time was Scarborough knocked off? Shots were heard about five minutes to 11. Hey, that's just about the same time that Cook ran over the girl. You are so right, and Scarborough got killed on the other side of the park. 
About five minutes to run to where the girl got run over. Now, what are you getting at? If you know something about this Scarbo killing, I Well, wonder... some guy called Tom Cook's father and said he saw the girl shoved in front of the car. He wouldn't tell his name because he said he'd get in trouble. Uh, probably a crank. No one would duck out on a deliberate murder. Unless he'd just rubbed out New York's biggest gangster. Hey. Yeah. Have you got Louis Spiegel on tap? No, he's hiding out. Oh. Well, do me a favor. Check your files and see if you've got a record on a John Cooper. The dead girl's ex-husband? Yeah, then I'll call you back. I've got a guy who might show us where we can find Louis Spiegel and the guy who pushed the girl in front of the car. We killed two birds with one stone. It's quite a billiard shot, but give my little stool pigeon two bottles of fermented grape juice and he can run the table. I left the apartment and slipped by the landlady's door. I knew she was building a party because I could smell the hunted proof clear out in the hall. I ducked out on the street and headed for Skid Row in a place called the Parrot Club. When I went in, I spotted my man sitting in his usual spot at the bar. His name was Wilbur Truitt. Ah, greetings, bucko. You have come just in the nick. Not having the necessary funds to purchase another bottle of strength, I asked yon bartender to put it on the cup. Uh, Wilbur, Whereupon I... he handed me this can of rat poison. Mm. It turned out to be rather soothing in a toxic sort of way. Bucko, you know me. I do not wish to deprive the little rodents of their daily constitution, so I would much rather nurse on the succulent end of a bottle. Wilbur, I'm looking for someone. I have been looking for someone all my life, preferably a brewery owner. A uh, bartender, uh, bring me a bottle. Oh, noble sir, your over-kindness doth rain tears from me. I do embrace your offer. Now, you don't wrap your hooks around this jug until I find out where Louis Spiegel is. Ah... That is indeed a difficult problem. Mr. Spiegel carried a rather large gun under his arm. Then if I sit here and gaze at that bottle for any great period, I shall become cotton-mouthed and surely choke to death. Mr. Louis Spiegel might be found in the freight yards, hiding in an old shack at the end of 50th Street now, bucko. I'm rusting. Here you are, Wilbur, and thanks. Farewell. Lord knows when we shall meet again. I have... Faint, cold fear thrills through my veins. <laughs> oh, but no matter. I have never let a cork confuse me before. Bartender, a corkscrew and bring the cat. I owe him a drink. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. Diamond, Walt, what did you find out? John Cooper has no record. Uh Uh-oh. But George Kingsley has. Oh, alias? Yeah. George Kingsley, alias John Cooper, did ten years for embezzlement. Oh, fine. Thanks, Walt. Now, here's the pitch. Lou Spiegel is in a shack in the freight yards at the end of 49th Street, North River. Get some men to surround the place and have Otis pick up John Cooper and bring him down there. I'll be there in half an hour and give you a couple of killers. All I needed was a motive. So I hung up the phone and headed for the house of my client, Earl Cook. Oh, come in, Mr. Diamond. I'm very glad you've come. Uh, Mr. Cook, did you... I uh, want to show you something. Here. Uh, What are they? Letters to my son. Blackmail letters. Oh? Where'd you find them? I was going through my son's things, trying to find something that might help uncover the motive for his accident. Mind if I take a look? Well, I can save you the trouble. They're about me. About you? Yes. I told you I'm in politics. Well, I am. And I'm a big power. When I began my rise, I was a young criminal lawyer. I had to accept a lot of cases that I might have turned down under different circumstances. And the opposition tried everything to discredit me. Smear campaigns. Saying that I was getting acquittals for common thugs who were known to be guilty. Later, when I became a judge, they switched the campaign. And said that the men I sentenced were innocent. Were they? Of course not. But in those letters to my son, the blackmailer said that he had definite proof that could ruin me. My son knew about my past, and when he started receiving the letters, he was afraid to confront me with the evidence, for fear I might have to admit my dishonesty. Have you talked with your son? I just left him. That's why he didn't tell you anything. He thought he was protecting me. His girl, Jean, found out who was sending him the letters, and, well, she was killed before she could tell him. Well, that fits. If the girl found out, then the blackmailer would not only have to know your son pretty well, but he'd also have to know her. You think you know who he is? Uh, see this magazine? Mm-hmm. Well, some of the pages are cut up. Now, take a look at these blackmail notes. 
They're formed with cut-out letters to spell out the words. Mm. The type is the same as the type on the magazine. Where did you get that magazine? In the girl's apartment. Well, then she must have had something to do with it. She found the magazine all right, but it wasn't hers. Uh, look, Mr. Cook. Yes. Did you ever send a man to prison named Kingsley? Yes, I believe so. For embezzling. Ah, thanks. And w- where are you going? I'll call you later. I've got a date at the freight route. <laughs> Hello, Rick. We've got Spiegel boxed up. He's in that shack down there. Ah, will he come out? If he does, it'll be feet first. Well, I guess he'd rather have it that way. Any shooting? He tried a couple, but I had the boys hold their fire until you got here. I see. Where's John Cooper? Otis hasn't showed up with him yet. Uh, let me use your loudspeaker, Walt. Oh, sure, go ahead, but uh, keep your head down. Spiegel. Spiegel, Lou. Why, that low life, I'll blast him to kingdom come. Hold it, Walt. Spiegel knows me. Louis. Louis, this is Diamond. I want to talk with you. You better get out of here, Diamond. This ain't none of your business. Lou, you've got my word. There'll be no shooting. I want to talk to you. Look, Diamond. I know they want me for the Scarborough killing, and I say, okay, I've done the job. But I'm allergic to electricity, and I don't like cops. You blow this place apart, I say, okay, too. And that's the way I want it. How do you still want to talk? I want five minutes. Okay, come on, Tom, but keep your hands behind your neck. Walt, no shooting, huh? Okay, but I think you're crazy. He kills guys for practice. I moved out from behind the boxcar and put my hands behind my head. I started down toward the shack, and I could see Spiegel looking at me over the barrel of a forty-five. One bad move from any of the men stationed around the yards, and I was going to get dead quick. I walked up to the shack and went in. That's far enough, Diamond. You've got five minutes. Uh, it won't take that long, Lou. Keep your hands where they are. Oh, I uh, thought you might want a cigarette. Oh. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm all out. Yeah. Keep the pack. Uh, just one. I got a date. Yeah. Light? I can make it. Four minutes, Diamond. Did you see a girl shoved in front of a car the night you knocked off Scarborough? Yeah. I called some guy and I told him about it. I read his ad in the personals, but I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, because then the law would know you were in the park. Looks like it don't make much difference now. The kid who ran over the girl is in on a manslaughter rap. You'll get five or ten. That's tough. You got three and a half minutes. Lou, did you get a good look at the man who gave the girl the shove? Sure, I'd remember him. Rick! What do they want? I'll see. With your hands up, you'll see. Sure. What is it, Walt? Otis has got Cooper. Lou, will you do me a favor? I don't know. I want you to tell me if the guy they've got up there is the one who pushed the girl. Sure. But I can't see him from here. I'll have him brought down. I hope you ain't up to something. I don't want to see no kid get sent up in a bum rap. But if you get funny, you get holes. Walt, have Otis bring Cooper halfway down to the shack. He doesn't want to go. Then drag him. I've only got two minutes. They bringing him? Yeah, here he comes. Okay. Out that door. What are you doing? I'm doing you a favor. I'm tired of this shack, and I'm walking out with you in front of me. Okay. Don't get too far ahead. Rick, what's Spiegel up to? I don't know. Hold your fire. I'm surprised at you. Even if I identified this guy, it wouldn't hold water. I got a bad reputation. Hey, what's going on? Take it easy, Otis. You can't do this to me. What's this all about? That's the guy, Diamond. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. I saw you push that dame in front of the car. You're crazy. Now, I don't like that. You got just ten seconds to admit it. I won't admit anything. Then I shoot you. Hey, you can't... Shut up, Flatfoot. Stay out of this, Otis. I tell you, I won't admit anything. Five seconds. Come on, Cooper. I found out all about your prison record. I know Cook sent you up and you wanted to get even. You found those letters Tom wrote to your ex-wife, so you started blackmailing him. And I know you lied when you said you hadn't seen your ex-wife. I found a magazine in her apartment with your address on it. Time's up. No, 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 no. All right, I did it, I did it. You're too late. I'm on schedule. Oh, you idiot. Why did you shoot him? What's the difference? I kill people, he kills people. Besides, he wasn't polite. So long, Diamond. You got your favor. He's making a break! You'll never make it. Spiegel! Spiegel, in the name of the law, stop! For what? Got him. 
I sure did. You know something? He wasn't such a bad guy. Wasn't he? I guess he's killed a dozen people in his time, but maybe you're right. Maybe he kissed them all goodbye before he pulled the trigger. Well, I got a right to an opinion. Yeah, yeah, and it scares me a little. You're lucky you didn't try to pull a gun on him. You'd look pretty silly telling everybody what a nice guy he was after he'd shot off the top of your head. Lots of lemon, honey. What's that you're playing? I don't know. It says on the sheet music for kazoo and voice. <laughs> you idiot. Here, see how this tastes. Ah, uh, oh, that's swell. But can't you drop a muscle in it or something? No, that's plenty strong. Oh. The last time you complained about my weak drinks, Francis had to carry you home piggyback. Yeah, remind me to buy him a saddle. I hear they uh, let the cook boy out of jail this evening. Well, how the dickens did you know that? Mm, never mind, I find out things. You have been snooping. Well, you won't tell me anything about your cases. How did you find out? Uh-uh. Helen? No. You'll be sorry. Here. You sing this, and I'll tell you how I found out. Well, I don't know whether I can. Your lips tell me no, no. But there's yes, yes in your eyes. I've been missing your kissing Just because I wasn't wise I'll stop my scheming and dreaming Cause I realize you're Oh, Rick, that's wonderful. Oh. Okay, now, make like a truth serum or I sing 20 courses of McNamara's band. <laughs> Well, I was looking for you, so I called Walt Levinson. He told me all about it. Very elementary, my dear Diamond. Oh, get her. Do I look smug? Close your eyes and let's see. Now, that's silly. Why do I have to close my eyes? Close your eyes. <laughs> oh, that's better. Ooh. Rick, aren't you nice? I certainly am. But people always notice my dimples first. Come here. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Helen, mm-hmm. you're looking smug again. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Eleanor Audley, William Johnstone, Sam Edwards, David Ellis, and Frank Lovejoy. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by Richard Sandville. And now, Dick Powell. Friends, I want to remind you of the wonderful group of programs NBC has on tap for tomorrow afternoon and evening. Shows like Hollywood Calling, Guy Lombardo, Four Star Playhouse, The Ethel Merman Show, and the NBC Symphony. For the best in radio listening tomorrow and always, keep your dial tuned to your favorite NBC station. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.